number three, we have the limit as x approaches zero of x over x squared minus x. So the very, very first thing you have to do is show that it's the indeterminate form. You do. So you have to show it's indeterminate. And then what we want to do is say, okay, algebraically, I can factor out an x from the denominator. And then that equals the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x minus 1. So what that means is this function here behaves like this function here. It means that as we cancel these x's, they are what we call a removable whole, which we're going to talk a lot about on Friday and following. So therefore, this is 1 over 0 minus 1, or negative 1. The quiz is tomorrow. It's just a quiz. There's one, yes. And there's one on this other. I have another review for you, but I stapled to it the answer key. So this, instead of giving you homework assigned tonight, you have this as practice with my answer key and all my handwriting stapled. So you have no homework, this is just like an optional review guide for you with an answer key. And there is an example like it on there. You do not have homework. All right, flipping to station two. Do you want to do one or two? Okay. Yeah, we're doing one or two. Do you want one or two? All right, so again, when we see this one, we're automatically, I know you're in your head, going, eh, complex conjugate. And it is true, because if you plug in 3, you get the square root of 4 minus 2 over 3 minus 3, which gives 2 minus 2, which is 0, and 3 minus 3, which is 0. So we know that this needs to be done using the complex conjugate. The complex conjugate is the difference of squares partner to the numerator. So we're going to multiply top and bottom by square root x plus 1, but plus 2 instead of minus 2. Don't foil your denominator. So you get the limit as x approaches 3. Square root x plus 1 times square root x plus 1 is x plus 1. Square root x plus 1 times 2 is 2 square root x plus 1, but the middle is negative 2 square root of x plus 1. So they cancel. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. Yep. Nope. All over x minus 3 times square root x plus 1 plus 2. Notice how I keep them grouped in parentheses. I don't want to multiply them. The reason for that is because here, plus 1 and minus 4 makes my numerator x minus 3. And that cancels nicely with that denominator. So this is equal to the limit as x approaches 3 of 1 over square root x plus 1 plus 2. 
Now I plug in my number. When I plug in the number, I no longer rate my limit. So the limit's here, but not there. You must rate your limit until you plug in the number. So you should have a limit as x approaches 3 in front of all your algebra. That's why I'm giving reminders today. So we get 1 fourth. You would multiply, so for number one, just your complex conjugate in number one would be the square root of x plus 5 plus square root 5. Um, it would be, the first part would become, when you multiplied it, the first part would become x plus 5. And then square root 5 times negative square root 5 would become negative 5. Yeah, the numerator eventually will become x. No, I left mine as a perfect. Yep, that's what I had. Okay, let's go to station 3. Okay, that's fine. Number one's a good one. We might, need, we could even do more than this. We have all of class time. So I just want to hit one of every station. And then I will gladly go back and do anything you want to do. Okay. So think about number one. Let's look at one. It's the limit as X approaches zero of sine five X over 4x. It is. It's a manipulation of sine x over x. But the problem is that what is in the bottom has to match what's up top. So right now we have a 5 and a 4. But remember that multi like this can really be thought of as like 1 fourth times sine 5x over x. So if I'm missing a 5, how do I get a 5? Yeah, so we're going to multiply by 5 over 5. So now you have the limit as x approaches 0 of 5 fourths times sine 5x over 5x. So since the coefficient inside matches the coefficient in the denominator, that limit as x approaches 0 of sine 5x over 5x becomes 1. All right, how about let's look at station 4, number 1. Sine x over x is 1. At 0. It is a lot of memorizing. All right, so on the back for the piecewise, it's the limit as x approaches 3 from the left. So what you have to do is look at that problem and say, okay, this is x values less than 3. So if I'm looking for the left, I'm plugging into this function. x values greater than 3 would be the right. 
So for the left, we're plugging into the top, which is x plus 2 over 2. So you get 3 plus 2 over 2, or 5 halves. Then the limit as x approaches 3 from the right says we plug into the bottom function, which is 12 minus 2x over 3. So the left-hand limit is 5 halves, the right-hand limit is 2. Therefore, exactly the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x does not exist. Exactly, which one does 3 equal, the top or bottom equation? Therefore, it's the left-hand limit, which is 5 halves. No. Okay, so that's stations 3 and 4. Station 5 is a graph. What? I hope so. Let's just quickly go through some of these then. Number one, the limit as x approaches two. So here's two, perfect. Number two, f of five. Perfect, it's where the closed circle is. Number three, the limit as x approaches zero. Number four, the limit as x approaches five does not exist. Left-hand limit is negative 1, right-hand limit is 1, therefore it does not exist. 5, the limit as x approaches 7 from the left. From the left. Number 6, f of 2. Good. It's undefined. It's not, does not exist. All right, number seven, the limit as x approaches seven from the right, one. And the limit as x approaches seven does not exist. Nine, at what x values on f of x does the limit of f of x exist, but f of x is not continuous? We haven't talked about this yet. Perfect, at x equals two. Okay, bonus, what's the domain of f? All real numbers, okay. If you say that, then what do you have to add to that? There you go. Perfect. It's all real numbers except two. Now be careful because these don't these have endpoints. It's not all real numbers. Yeah, it'd be negative two to eleven. Yeah. Yep. So you could rate it either way. Negative two to two excluding two, or all reals from negative two to eleven except two. So on 9, it's kind of like 10. The limit exists, but there's no point value. Therefore, it's not continuous, but the limit exists. For 9, just x equals 2. Because the limit exists and is negative 1, but f of 2 is not defined. Yeah, I was going to flip over and look at some of station six. Oh, you want to pick the number? That's the one I was going to pick. All right. Number two. 
the limit as x approaches negative 1. And this is one of those function compositions that we were kind of struggling with the other day. And you know, I only, the other teacher agreed with me. She got two, but like the other teacher said one. So now we really don't know because we both disagreed. So we're all sort of jumbled. So I decided that that was a bad question and I would never ask one like it. It was from the other day in class. You were on the Zoom. It was frustrating. So then I literally texted like a bunch of other teachers and then we were like all debating too. So nobody can agree on an answer. Like our text thread was like 40 messages long and everybody was like sending pictures of their work and no, and like we just didn't agree. So I was like, I'm done. I hate this question. <laughs> All right, so in this problem, you start on the inside. So we start with the limit as x approaches negative 1 of g of x. So g of x is here, exactly. So the left-hand limit is negative infinity, and the right-hand limit is infinity. Exactly. Does not exist. No. So as soon as you get this, it's this. No, because like that's more me showing you kind of what we were discussing. That like, okay, if you replace G with U, these are just like two ways to do it. These two. And this. Yep. Which one do you want to see? All right, let's talk about three. F of x is the inside function when we want to find zero. So the limit at x of x of zero is negative one. Because now when you want to find the limit for g, you have to go from the value you got on f of x, which is negative 1. So you're finding g of negative 1, not g of 0. Oh, uh, so you did it with like g of 0, which was 3. And then you did f of 3. So did you have 2? Okay. Okay. I get what you mean by they switched it. Not that, like, they switched your limit here, no. but that, like, they switched the order of F and G. <laughs> Got it. But are we feeling better about these now? The so number three is really awesome. That's a fair question. Do you want to say so you said you struggle with, like, the, um, the trig ones? So do you want to go back and look at something from station three? All right, let's look at, and I have another handout too with a bunch of problems that I was going to give you and let you pick problems you want me to do with you. Yes, and that's what's on this handout here. Here, I'll let you see this while I pass them out. So, 
river just like in the infinite. These are going to be the ones with equal. This one, or so sine of zero on the unit circle is zero. Sine of yes, yep, that's so. At this point, you're simplified, so now you just plug in because sine of zero is zero, cosine of zero is one, so zero over one is zero. And this, sine x over x, is 1. So, like, they just split the into our rule we know and then into something we can find. Right. So, looking at that handout with the uh, limits on it, any of those you want to see? Yeah. All right, so for number two, It is the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of x plus 3 over x squared plus x minus 6. So what happens is if you plug in 2, 2 plus 3 is 5. 2 squared is 4 plus 2 minus 6. So you get 5 over 0. So the minute you get 5 over 0, does, Deja, i got to print you one. I have no idea why I only have four copies. So just give me a second because I can't, I don't have it readily available to print. So we have 5 over 0. The end, anytime you get a number over 0, you need to think vertical asymptote. Okay, which means your limit is going to be an infinity. So if we're looking at the limit from the left, you just need to determine is it going to be positive or negative to the left of 2. So if you get 5 over 0, it's a vertical asymptote, which means your answer is an infinity. So if 2 is here, I need to plug in 1.9. So if you plug 1.9 into the top, you're going to get a positive. If you plug 1.9 into the bottom, you just need to know if this is going to be bigger or smaller than 6. So 1.9 squared is less than 4. 1.9 plus something less than 4 going to be like 5 something. 5 minus 6 is going to be negative. Therefore, this limit is negative infinity. Because this isn't factorable. Well, maybe it is. No, it's not. But it won't cancel. Mm -hmm. 
Right. It's not, it's not a, yeah, it's still a, a vertical asymptote. Anytime you get a number over zero, it means that the algebra isn't going to help you. A number over zero automatically implies a vertical asymptote. A horizontal asymptote all has to do with a comparison of the um, powers of the exponents. So like in that one, the numerator is one less than the denominator. So there's no vertical asymptote. Or there's a vertical asymptote at zero. Sorry. I mean, sorry, horizontal, please, sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, at negative three, it's removable discontinuity. It's a whole. So you know when you said you factored x plus three, x plus three, x minus two, this becomes a whole. This is your vertical asymptote. So the holes cancel. X equals negative three is not a vertical asymptote. It's a hole. Exactly. So that's what I was saying. Both. Both. The answer to your question is both. Like, technically. Yeah, because even if you simplified and canceled, you still end up with one over X minus two. And when you plug that in, you still end up with one over zero, which still is a number over zero, which is a vertical asymptote. And then you would have still simplified. Your answers are different. The answer is x approaches 2 from the left is negative infinity. The limit for this is x approaches negative 3 is negative 1 to this. Exactly. Because if you plug it in at the beginning, you get zero over zero, which is the indeterminate, which tells you you could factor. What I would say is if you plugged in two from the beginning, you get five over zero, which implies a vertical asymptote. So that's the difference. A number over zero is a vertical asymptote. Zero over zero is indeterminate, which tells you to do some algebra. Yeah. Yeah, I used to say I don't care. Mine too. Yeah. All right, Alex. But I like to like talk about this. Oh, but Asia.
pues 